G'day boys and girls, so today we're going to have a look at another gel ball blaster rifle. Uh, today we've got another M4 style one, similar to the M4 SS we just recently looked at. Uh, a couple of things you might notice, I've now got a proper bench as opposed to an ironing board with a towel on it. A few other things, uh, so I am going to slowly get this better and better as I go. So yeah, other than that, I appreciate the feedback from the last video and I think it's around 2,500 views at this point. So. Cheers to you guys, thanks for the support, absolutely love it, and just encourages me to do more and more for you. So, moving further along, without any further delay, today we have the Wells M401 Gel Ball Blaster Rifle. So, first things first, let's have a look at the actual blaster itself and see what you get with the package up close. So, starting at the business end, you have a molded flash hider just here that you can see. I'll just get that a bit closer so you can see that. Yep, molded flash hider, molded into the outer barrel design, along with the standard AR style front iron sight just here. Now, on the bottom of that, you do have a sling attachment point. Like uh, most of them, it is actually uh, Plastic, although it looks like there was a metal pin in there, so it's going to be okay for most uh, applications. But again, I wouldn't go leaning on it and whatnot, it'll probably just break either way. Uh, four hop ups on this one with that molded flash hider, it is going to be a bit of a pain to deal with. However, four hop ups on this one, uh, this flash hider is going to be something you have to deal with. You might have to uh, remove it and whatnot in order to put one on, or there might be one for sale which fits with over the top of this anyway, although I haven't seen any, so just something to be aware of there. Moving further along the actual front end of the blaster, you have the handguard. Now the handguard has a quad rail assembly setup. As you can see, you've got your top rail, your side, your bottom, and then your left hand side. Now the top rail on this is not a monolithic rail. It is only located over the handguard itself. As you can see just inside there, you do actually have a nice alloy barrel as well. And this here is just secured using a coupling on the end here. So you can take this off. Same with the rails each one of them has a set of screws you can remove those screws and take those off along there if you so desire moving further along you do have on the top of the actual receiver itself the uh, ar style hand carry or uh, handle for it and molded into that as you can see just there is the back of the iron sight so you do have a little peep sight again like with any other gel ball blaster absolutely pointless but it's there for you know to look cool now you do have some uh, wonderful little windage and elevation dials here to adjust it. I don't believe that these are going to actually do you any good. I think they're just there for show, but it's a nice little addition. So moving further along to the back of the carry handle, you have the charging handle. Now, unlike the M4SS, when you pull this back, it doesn't feed the mag. All it does is opens the dust cover just on the right hand side of the mag well itself, like so just to expose uh, part of the inner side of the gearbox so that you can see what's going on. Nice little addition, doesn't practically do anything, but that's fine. While we are also on the right side, you do have your mag release button located just there. Moving on to your trigger with the uh, molded finger guard underneath the actual trigger itself, the mag well, and then the pistol grip. Now the pistol grip has a molding like most of the M4 style blasters, just there. I'm just trying to get that so you can see it, so that your middle finger will sit over the top of that. In your hand, it does feel quite firm and uh, easy to grip and grasp, so nice little pistol grip just there. And as you can see by the wires running through, in there and in there, the motor is actually mounted inside the pistol, area, pistol grip area. Now on the right side, you do have a little molding here for a fire selector. The fire selector on the right hand side is not real, it doesn't work, it doesn't do anything. The fire select is on the left hand side, just here. 
as you can see, just there. Still on the right hand side of the receiver, you'll notice just here is a little molding for where the gas block would go on a real style, on a real world version of the M4. Of course, this isn't there, so it's just a piece of plastic that sits in like so. Absolutely no point, just a cool little feature to make it look good. Now moving towards the back, we have the buttstock. Now the buttstock is very similar to most of your AR M4 designs, absolutely nothing too special about it. It does have a few unique features such as the uh, design is a little bit different to most of the ones we have received so far, like your M4A1s or your M4 SS's for example. Pretty simple, it is adjustable. You just push this lever up like that and you can adjust it all the way up to there. So you can get some pretty good adjustments with that with a couple of points in uh, in the path. Now you can't push it all the way forward, it's not actually secured though. So you have to pull it back and then it'll get locked in just there. There is that little gap. So we do have on the back here, that you can see just there, a sling attachment point. So that's for the back end. So that linked in with the one on the front end, you can put a sling in and run it over your shoulder. You do also have these two points here and here, which you could use to run a pin through if you wanted to. Now the butt stock, similar to uh, the STD AK, 47V2 does have a rubber pad on there. Now it's only a little coating of rubber over the top of the plastic, but still something nice there. Something else while we're still on the buttstock, just here on the right hand side of the buttstock, you do have a small little Picatinny rail. Uh, I'm not 100% sure as to why that's there or what purpose it could serve, but it's there if you want it. Maybe if you wanted to, you could mount a GoPro there or a torch or something. I don't know, go for it. And something else to be aware of on the back of the buttstock on the left hand side we do have this little compartment here now you can't really fit a lot in there i wouldn't it's not big enough to store any gels or even most batteries won't fit in there so i'm not really sure as to the purpose of it but it's there i mean it's big enough to maybe get three fingers in giggity but other than that it just clips in like so and it's not a problem something else you might have noticed from the wells m401 is that it has a very unique look. Now, all of the Wells gel ball blasters have, seem to be following this very similar pattern, and that is the clear upper receiver and body with black, or in the case of some of the G36V2s, blue uh, attachments and uh, extra components. So, something there which I know some people are not a fan of. I know some people absolutely love this because it just looks cool. Personally, I don't mind the look of it. I think it's interesting. It's something different. Now this isn't made of nylon like the M4 SS was, and it's not exactly plastic. There are plastic components, so your handguard is plastic, your outer barrel, the buffer tube, and most of your buttstock are plastic, as well as the carry handle and the pistol grip. This center section though, the actual receiver, which is clear, is made of a polycarbonate material, so it is quite strong, and not only that, but it feels quite sturdy. So, something there just to be aware of. So, now that we've had a good look over the body of the Wells M401 and some of its features, let's have a look at the basic operations and how to use the blaster. So, firstly, let's have a look at the magazines. Now, as you can see there, it's just a normal style of, uh, similar to most M4 style magazines in the shape and design, just a simple box mag. On the top there, you can see the contacts. So this is an automatically fed gel ball blaster. There is a motor in the bottom of this which when uh, you pull the trigger, it will charge and start feeding them up automatically. So be aware that you don't want to go tipping water through this. You're just going to break and damage that motor or some of the wiring or the components. So something to be aware of there. Now, something I will highlight, there are a lot of M4 style gel ball blasters out there at the moment. And there's a bit of confusion in a lot of cases on which magazines cross over, such as with your STD5s, your STD6s, your M4 SS's, your M4A1 Gen 8s, and in this one, now, the Wells magazines will not fit on your M4A1 Gen 8s or your M4 SS's. One of the key reasons for that, I do have a M4A1 magazine just here, the standard plastic one. If you look at the top here, you can see a raised edge. Now, that's for where the actual T-piece feeds into the main barrel of the blaster. And on the Wells, it's not designed the same. On the Wells, it actually has a piece that goes slightly into the magazine. Now, that's one of the key reasons. The other is they are a slightly different shape, which means they won't necessarily fit both over. And also the catching latches that are on this side are slightly different sizes and shapes. So these will not work with this blaster. 
you've been told. Unfortunately. Now back to the Wells magazine. On the back here, you do have a door like most of them. You pop it open like so, and that's where you can feed your gels, as you can see in there. Uh, once again, I have preloaded this one for use, and it's that simple. I'm going to put the magazine in, you simply grab the gel blaster as you would any other. Now, the magwell on the M401 is flared, which makes it a bit easier to guide it in, unlike the M4SS where you could sometimes, if you're in a rush, you might have a trouble or you might accidentally knock it. On this one, you can very simply go straight in like so. As with uh, most of the M4 styles, just a quick little tap up, that way you know it's engaged. And again, because it's a clear body, you can see it's engaged. So if I take that out, like so, and you look very closely there, you see that, that black section there? That's the tube from the T-piece coming down. So that actually goes partially into the magazine. So, so something just I've just noticed after doing the chrono and accuracy testing that I thought I'd show you here. Now on the magazines, you can see just there, the actual latches are quite high up, which is good. It makes it easy to grab and open, like you can see there. However, it does mean something else tends to happen and it's happened to me a couple of times now. So just want to show you so you're fully aware of what's going to happen. When you go to put it in the magwell, make sure you don't go up from the back because what will happen is it'll catch the door as you push it in. So just something to notice. It's happened to me now probably three or four times in the testing. So when you go to reload, just put the front end in first and then fit it up. Much like the AK-47, front end, swivel back. Other than that, she seems to be good. Now, if we go and look at the fire selector, need to make sure it's in semi or safe, because again, if it's in safe, it won't, the trigger won't even pull, it'll lock it in. At the very least in semi, but we'll flick over to full auto. Disengage the magazine, very simple. Just simply press the mag release button right there, and it releases out. It's just a simple catch on this side that pushes out. Now, mag release location, I think is a little high. It's just enough to be annoying, but it's fine. So it's not really that big a deal. It's just a personal preference. You do have your bolt release button just here. Once again, serves absolutely no purpose. It's just that it'll cool and rattle around when you're running around. So something to take into mind. Next bit, which is the important piece, is the battery. Now the battery is located within the buffer tube of the actual stock itself. As with most M4 designs, that is the case. So what you do is you simply twist the stock uh, counterclockwise like so, and then pull it back. And there's your battery just there. Now, it does come standard with a 7.4 and that's what I've plugged in here. Now I'll use that for most of my tests just so you can be aware of what it's gonna be like out of the box. You can fit an 11.1 volt into it. However, something you need to keep in mind, especially with some of your thicker 11.1 volt batteries, like so, if you look there, it's quite a bit larger. The battery is meant to go into the front end of the stock where the buffer tube would slide in just there. Now there is a raised ridge just inside there, so it may not necessarily fit. If you have to do it this way, you can remove the buffer tube completely. You just have to pull back on this, pull it down. The whole buffer tube will come out. You can then feed the battery in through the back. Make sure your plugs and wires are first. And you may need some long nose pliers to pull these plugs through. They can tend to get caught quite easily. And that's that simple. Now again, that's only if you want to run an 11.1 volt battery. Whether or not you'll actually need to is up to you and your personal preference. I don't, don't believe it's necessary, but that's just my opinion. So once again, once you're finished with that, put your battery back in. You have to pull that pin up to put the buffer tube back in because there's actually a full raised ridge around the back of the buffer tube just there. Pull it up, put it in, clips into place, not to worry. Make sure your connections go into the buffer tube properly and you're not jamming them. Slide it back onto the molded point, turn it clockwise, and you're good to go. Now, she's ready to go. Something to mention about this, the weight of it is actually good. It's a good weight, probably two and a half kilos, maybe two kilos, roughly. I'd have to weigh it probably to know for sure, but it's a good solid weight. The blaster itself feels fairly firm. The only bit that I don't like is this connection on the buffer tube. The fact that you can do that, and I do have a friend who has one of these and he has numerous times that has disconnected on its own. It's annoying. There might be something you could easily do to fix that, but that's something you need to be aware of because if you accidentally drop it the first time, you'll see that break and come off and you'll be like, oh no, I've just 
you know, broken a $200 blaster, you haven't done that. It's just not that good at latching in. Something to be aware of. You might want to look at fixing that up or doing something there to make sure it stays in place. But again, that's up to you. Your mileage may vary, as the saying goes. Now, ergonomically, it fits pretty good. The bus stock is somewhat convex, uh, concave, so it does fit quite nice into your shoulder. You can raise it up, you can get your eye line down the iron sights, which again, in a job or blaster, relatively pointless, and it feels good. So you can hold it like so, you can hold it like so, however you wish to hold it, not a worries. Now, especially with the way I play in the areas that, in the fields that I play in, they're quite close, you're running around a lot of cover, um, very fast cornering, so I like to go like this, so I can quickly move and change the direction that I'm pointing. But once again, your field may be different. So we've had a look at the blaster. Now we've just gone through how to do the basic operation. Let's do a chrono test. So I've just flicked over to auto, uh, full auto manic fire. I'll put a few rounds through it, see if we can get a round per second reading and also uh, make sure the beat per second isn't changing for any strange reasons. So we seem to be getting anywhere between 7 and 11 rounds per second with 270 to 260 average feet per second. So the feet per second is about the right. However, that fire rate seems really low. It doesn't seem to be firing that low, but it's hard for me to tell just by ear. So what I might do, I'll quickly swap over to an 11 volt battery and we'll see if there's much difference. So I've now switched over to an 11.1 volt battery. I've refilled the magazine just to be safe and we're ready to go. Something to be aware of again, as usual, I'm using uh, hardened oranges as my gels. There is the odd milky mixed in there, but other than that, it's pretty much oranges all the way. So let's see how she goes. So we seem to be getting a consistent 23 and a half rounds per second. So that does sound about right. It's a pretty good fire rate for a limb bolt battery. Fairly on the low side compared to some of the other gel blasters out there. It could just be the gearing set up in the wells is made that way. Um, not a bad thing, really, because that way if you chuck a limb bolt battery in, which I'd almost recommend with that rate uh, rounds per second rate of fire, it does mean that you're not going to run any magazine as quickly. So, not necessarily a bad thing. Feet per second, 260 to 270 average. Again, perfectly consistent with what we've seen before. As for a standard blaster, this one does hit quite hard, so absolutely nothing wrong with that. From what I can see, there was one odd uh, burst there where it showed up as 11 or uh, 15. I think that's just a missed feed where it didn't actually feed or it might have fired two gels early, something like that, so I'm not too stressed by that. So. All in all, good round. So, let's do an accuracy test. So, like with the M4SS, what we're going to do now is we're going to do full auto straight through, not going to put uh, lift up on the firing, and we're going to see how long it takes to empty the magazine. Now I've frimmed this magazine that's currently in there, including charged feed tube, so this will be a fairly accurate representation of what you're likely to get out of a single magazine. Without further delay, let's give it a go.
bad run. So just so you're aware, I did have an 11.1 volt battery in for all those accuracy test uh, tests. Shouldn't affect the accuracy realistically, it only should increase the fire rate, so that should be fine. I just didn't have a chance to swap back to the 7.4 volt. All in all, it uh, looks fairly good and handles fairly well. The accuracy at medium to long range for the gel blasters does seem to be lacking a fair bit. It just seems to curve as soon as it comes out of the barrel when you're looking at anything more than about 8 to 10 meters. Uh, it could be because it fires at quite a high feet per second rate, it just can't handle the direction, in which case a hop up will be an absolute necessity for any sort of mid to long range shooting. But other than that, it seems to go pretty good, so let's have a quick look at some gameplay. Now, I've only got a couple of very quick, short little clips here for you. And the reason being is I just ran out of time on the weekend when I was using this blaster. So, hopefully you enjoy and they help highlight some of the benefits and capabilities. That running. Hey kids, who's in there? Support. He's not anymore. He walked straight in front of me. Anyone else? Yay! Go! That ain't fuck around. Yep! Got me on the finger! That's like really quiet. That's a lot of power punch. Hit! So hopefully that uh, gameplay footage helped highlight to you how the blast is actually going to handle in the field. Now something to be aware of when I was playing with it, that was a 7.4 volt battery I was using. So like I said, an 11.1 volt battery isn't necessary but it does definitely help. I'll get onto that towards the end at the recommended accessories. With the final thoughts though, uh, it's good, like the blaster is more than capable, it's relatively solid, the only real downside is that connection where the stock comes off for the battery to go in, uh, where the buffer tube connects to the receiver. That probably worth doing something to to make sure it's more secure for yourself but again that's personal preference uh, get a sling for it and make sure it doesn't just rely on that because that's where a friend of mine's one keeps falling off just over movement and such other than that it handles well performance out of the box is great it yeah it's it's a good all-round blaster as most of the wells blasters are straight out of, straight out of the box and yeah there's not a lot more to say about that one so as for recommended accessories that I'd uh, highly recommend you picking up with this blaster if you were to buy it, uh, first things first, get a hop up. Anything beyond 8 meters is just near impossible to hit with any sort of consistency. So to me a hop up is absolutely necessary. Uh, magazines, I'd recommend at least one but maybe even two extras a spare just in case so that way you can keep playing through your games and use a bit of suppressing fire, suppressive fire and continue playing without having to worry too much about running out too quickly. And an 11 volt battery, while it isn't strictly necessary, you can do well with a 7.4. I do recommend it on the basis that when you are pumping out 22 to 25 rounds per second, that increased fire rate, people are more likely to keep their heads down. So it gives you far more options for suppressing fire anyway and just laying down fields of fire. So uh, definitely something I would recommend getting. And I've had a Wells Blaster as my first and I ran an 11 volt battery in it from day dot and I never had a problem with it, so you don't need to worry about anything breaking, it should be relatively fine. So yeah, that's it for the review, let me know what you think in the comment section below, 
Uh, feel free to give the video a like and a share if you enjoyed it and you want other people to see it and you know someone who's uh, thinking of buying one of these blasters and you want to give them a heads up before they get it. Otherwise, if you have any issues, feel free to give it a dislike if that's uh, how you feel and let me know what you think below. Other than that, jump on over to my Facebook page and you'll be able to see some photos. I keep regular updates there. I do also have an Instagram as well, just to put up photos every now and then for a bit of fun. So feel free to jump on those. Anything you do is absolutely appreciated and thank you for giving me your time to watch this video. Other than that, I'll see you next time.